Hey everyone, this is Max, and welcome back to another episode of Our Gem Interviews. This week, I'm here with... Linda Mitchell. Linda, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you on the show. So, Linda, what kind of art do you make? Well, I make art that uses animal imagery. I've always loved animals ever since I was a kid, and I find it more interesting than humans to use, but it's really <laughs> about humans. It's really about human experience, the... Uh, the work it's um, mixed media paintings and installations and it's more about you know an emotional landscape um, in my life or things going on in the world that I'm responding to great and why do you like to make art it keeps me sane it's cathartic <laughs> and it's the only way I can kind of get all this stuff in my head out I feel that yeah. so how did this come to be well, I grew up in a family with artistic people. My aunt, great aunt, lived with us, and she taught us, you know, art and speaking and, and piano, so I just mm. thought it was normal. My grandmother painted, my mother did some, mm. and um, I was always making something, always. So you had a ton of influences at home. Right, right, that made it seem like a normal, you know, activity or life, you know, lifelong passion. That is really great. Yeah. Um, how does art have an effect on the way you live your life? Well, I've always structured my life that, so that I had plenty of time and space and people that let me have, you know, what I needed to get away to be an artist. Mm. So, um, because I knew that's what I needed for my life. And it, it keeps me um, in the right frame of mind and I can do, you know, other things if I have you know, my head in the right place for my art. Great. And so when COVID hit, uh, how did that affect your art? It gave me more time. I actually got <laughs> over here more to the studio because it's, you know, it was safe. We have a lot of people here, but we were far away. And, um, you know, I, I spent a lot of time here and I did work at home on my um, quarantine journal project, which um, documented that time. So that was kind of interesting to me. That is really lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, do you feel like you have a genre that you fit into or can relate to? Well, I think my work is expressionistic because it's really about um, emotional, you know, landscapes of humans. And mm. um, it may not fit the visual of what you think of as expressionistic, but I think it is that. I also think it's um, a bit like surrealism because I like to use things that don't make sense. But usually for me, they have a symbolic um, nature. Mm, yeah. They do uh, have this sort of like almost cryptic nature where there's a lot going on more than just the picture that we see. Yeah, and I don't want to use the same symbols you've seen before to mm. denote things. So I, mm. I pick very strange and personally to me, you know, interesting elements to uh, put together in weird ways. I love that. Uh, what do you see in other people's work that interests you? Where do you look for inspiration? I really love it when someone else's work surprises me and uh, like I didn't see it coming. It's something different and doesn't look like everything I've seen. So it's kind of all over the board, but that's what I kind of look for. Mm. Yeah. Something surprising and new. So how many days a week do you practice? Um, I try to get over here four or five days a week. They didn't always work out, but I also work at home mm. or carry a sketchbook around and, and keep, you know, documenting my life. So it's a bit of a constant thing for you. Yeah, it works best when I do that. I mm. Yeah, yeah. That's great. And so how do you differentiate work that you would say is uh, made in practice versus work that is more of a final product? I would say practice is the thing you come do every day and that, you know, kind of processes all the ideas and emotions, whatever, but when I make the final product and get to show it to, you know, the viewer and get, you know, a response, that kind of completes the circle to me of a, of a oh. product that, you know, is, is involves an, a, an audience. Oh, cool. Uh, and how do you know when you're in the flow? Um, well, I, I know when time passes and I'm just happy and, and the universe kind of helps me co-create because I listen to it. 
Mm. That's really cool. And are there steps that you always take when making art? And it's okay if there aren't steps that you take. Uh, usually I, I start with um, making a mess on my surface. <laughs> like if it's a big piece, uh, like this size, I might throw it on the ground and, and you know use rollers and brims and buckets. And if it's small, I've been using just like a credit card to swipe across color and then oh. maybe, you know, spray a little whatever. Mm. But um, I look for, then, then I look for the imagery that wants to come through it. And sometimes I have a preconceived idea, but a lot of times I'll just see what's going to bubble up from in here or on the surface. Oh, cool. And uh, are there any projects that you're currently working on or do you have uh, upcoming projects where people can see your work? Yeah, I'm currently working on repurposing this billboard that was a 48 foot long billboard from 2020, cutting big pieces. It was put up by Art Pop. Um, they put up billboards of artists' work. And uh, so I cut it up and I'm making new paintings from it. I'm also doing really tiny ones from a, a residency I had in France. So I'm kind of bouncing from big to tiny, which is really kind of fun. Oh. And I'm having a solo show in Jacksonville next February at the oh. university there. Yeah, That's so cool. Linda, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. Enjoyed it. You heard it here, folks. Tune in next time for another episode of Art Gem Interviews.